The off-field actions of an NFL player spotlights a problem not often addressed or discussed in the African-American community, and that is domestic violence. Take a look at this video. Baltimore Ravens running back Ray Rice is seen dragging the limp body of his then fiance, now wife, out of an elevator. Moments before, Rice allegedly punched her in the face, knocking her out cold. Dr. Oliver Williams is the director of the Institute on Domestic Violence in the African American Community. He joins us via Skype from St. Paul, Minnesota. Dr. Williams, good to have you joining with us uh, today to talk about this very important topic of domestic violence in the African American community. And, you know, this was a, a good opportunity for us to have this discussion because of the Ray Rice uh, situation and other. Uh, comments that have emanated as a result of it. But first of all, tell me about the work at the Institute, please. Well, uh, the Institute on Domestic Violence started in about 1994. And what happened was that we knew that there wasn't as much information about the issue of domestic violence in the African American community. So uh, there was a group of us who were African American uh, scholars and practitioners who had done the work and sometimes doing the work in isolation of our uh, other colleagues uh, got together and wanted to tell the story about the issues of domestic violence among African Americans and to try to come up with solutions to respond to the problem. Uh, can we talk about the specifics of domestic violence within our community versus, let's say, other communities? Well, historically, uh, the literature talked about the fact that there was just a very high rate of domestic violence among African Americans and that we tended to lead uh, other communities with the exception of Native Americans uh, uh, around the issue of domestic violence. And so uh, some of the research has been sort of uh, updated and we still have a higher percentage uh, based on disproportional rates of uh, poverty. And even though poverty doesn't cause domestic violence, when you have issues associated with poverty. Sometimes you have multiple other issues that you deal with as well. And because African Americans are disproportionately low income, our rates are tend to be a little higher. But even with control for socioeconomic status, we still have a, a, a higher rate than uh, many other groups do too. Yeah, and, 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 and back to what you were saying, that it occurs more frequently amongst couples that do have uh, lower incomes. If the male partner is unemployed or underemployed, that also uh, creates a, a bad environment, as well as alcohol, the role alcohol plays in all of this. That's right. And, and also in environments where people live in high-stress, low-income environments, and places, too, where they are also more intensely policed. Um, and one of the things that happens is that, and, and that, that could be a number of issues influencing that. Some of it could be uh, the fact that, uh, you know, poor women have fewer resources, and so they may call the police in order to get him off of her. But, you know, middle-income women uh, sometimes want to hide the violence that they experience, because, but they may have more resources for a period of time. So there are these different challenges that specifically affect us, and we need to think about ways to respond to it. Even though there is good help in, uh, in other communities and in shelter programs and such, we really need to think about other ways to be able to respond to it and not look at law enforcement as the only um, element on the continuum to respond to it. We need to have community-based approaches to be able to respond to it. We need to have faith communities help us to respond to it. And there's examples of many of those things that we've produced materials on in terms of how people can do that. But all uh, programs within our community need to be trained in terms of how to think about it and respond to the problem. Um, Dr. Williams, can you be more specific about the programs that are not law enforcement based, but that are more community based or faith based organization? Yeah. Um, so there's uh, four churches that we went to. We have a project called Speaking of Faith. And so what we did was there, there was uh, some people who have been doing this work for a lot longer than they back, but it continued to be an issue that people within our community kept bringing up. And so there, there were some people uh, from the faith community that approached us to respond to it among mm -hmm. African Americans. So what we did was not do, just do education, not just do 
um, things where we encourage ministers to preach it through the pulpit only. What we did was we wanted to figure out ways that churches could respond to get her to a safe place. Because if you don't get her to a safe place, talking by itself without action doesn't do her much good. So we went to different programs across the United States, some in rural communities in the Mississippi Delta, some in um, a mega church in Detroit, Michigan, a middle-sized church in West Palm Beach, Florida. And there's this church in one of the poorest communities in the United States outside of Chicago and showed the work that people were doing in those four programs that were all trained to address the issue of domestic violence, but adapted it because they had different communities with different needs and then found ways to engage their communities and provide resources uh, for battered women, but in some places to confront men who battered. And yeah, and, 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 and I, I, we're running out of time, but I do want to talk about the fact that you deal with not just women who have been uh, abused through domestic violence uh, incidents, but you also deal with the batterer, the, the, the male responsible. Can you just talk very quickly about what it's like dealing with batterers and what you hear from them? Well, you know, uh, I, one big thing is that um, there, oh, there's a phrase that says that uh, in domestic violence, says is, uh, sexism gives men license to be abusive. And I believe that's true. One of the things that I think we don't do is try to figure out the brand of sexism that different men present. And is, is if it's the, the same way with everyone. And there are different uh, issues that people bring up. But what's interesting is that men who batter tend to be very, very resistant and uh, are in denial and minimize the issues and also blame the person, uh, the victim, for the abuse. And the, one other truism is that that, uh, that the person that does the violence is 100% responsible for the violence. And violence is a choice. And they have to learn other ways to be able to deal with the problem uh, other than using violence and abuse to address conflict. Dr. Yeah. Oliver Williams, director of the Institute on Domestic Violence in the African American Community, thank you so much for your insights and for the work that you do not only with the victims of domestic violence, but also very important work that you do with those who batter.